Hi guys, this is John here. Continuing our session number four, which is all about making our machine learn. And in today's example, we will look at the steps that we need to take to make a machine learn. And specifically in this lecture, we will look at classification. So let us get started. Step number one for us is defining the problem. Let us take an example. Now let us say you have a friend who is a botanist. Now a botanist is a person who studies plants. Okay. And your friend, let's give her a name called Jane. And Jane is doing research on a particular type of flower. Okay, so I'm taking an example where you have a friend, her name is Jane, and Jane is doing research on a particular type of flower. And that particular type of flower is called as an iris flower. And she comes to you and says, Hi, can you help me build a machine that can identify the type of iris flower. So Jane knows that you understand artificial intelligence. So she comes to you and she says, can you help me identify the type of iris flower? So there are three types of iris flowers. The first type is called versicola. The second type is called setosa. And the third type is called virginica. Let me repeat the question once again. You ask Jane, how do I differentiate between these three? Which means that how do I say that the flower is a versicola or a setosa or a virginica? So she tells you, there are two parts to this flower. First is called as petal. The other is called as sepal. These are two parts to the flower and the petal has the petal length and the petal width. Similarly, the sepal has the sepal length and the sepal width. And what she tells you is that based on the petal length, the petal width, the sepal length and the sepal width, you can say whether it's a versicolor, setosa or virginica. That's an interesting problem. So I will repeat the problem once again. You have a friend named Jane who wants you to help her with building a machine that can identify the type of iris flower here, where, as I said, there are three types of iris flowers, versicolor, setosa and virginica. She tells you that you can identify these three flowers based on the petal and the sepal. These are two characteristics of a flower. The petal has the length and the width. The sepal has the length and the width. And based on this, you can identify the type of flower. Okay. And that's all she tells you. So now she has helped you defining the problem which is identify the type of flower. So the problem is, can we identify the type of flower based on petal length, petal width, sepal length, sepal width. So I'm going to say PL, PW, SL and SW, where PL is petal length, PW is petal width. SL is sepal length, SW is sepal width. So using these four parameters, can we say what type of flower are we looking at? Okay. So this is the problem statement. So the next question we ask ourselves, do we have the right data? So what do you do? With step one done, we ask Jane, can you give me data? So Jane goes back to her lab and gets you a table which looks somewhat like this. 
and this table has real life measured data and when i say real life measured data means scientists have looked at these flowers and measured the lengths and widths of these flowers and based on these parameters they have classified the type of flower if it's a setosa versicolor or virginica so jane will give you this data once we get the data from jane we see that she has given you six features you would say wait john you're trying to tell me that there were six features i'm saying yes but you will tell me but you explained only five of them i said let's go back and check we have sepal length 1 sepal width 2 petal length 3 petal width 4 then comes season and then comes flower yes there are six then john why did you explain only five the reason is the season column is not required why season has no impact on the type of flower so step number 2 is not just about getting the data it's also about getting the right data so if the seasons column is not required what do we do we remove those columns so now this is a decision you have to take as a person who knows ai that which data is required and which is not the column of season was not required so we will ignore this and we will work with these five columns now to complete step number 2 what we have to do is we have to decide what are the parameters that i will feed or give my machine so that my machine can train or learn to classify my output okay so as we decided that based on my sepal length my sepal width my petal length and petal width i will feed these parameters as my input and the output would be my flower type this is very important when you are working with ai is you have to decide what is my input and what is my output and we will see this with many examples as we move forward so let us revise step number 1 was defining the problem that is classifying the type of flower based on the sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width step number 2 was getting the right data and there we saw three parts to it which is getting the data finding out which columns are not necessary and third deciding what would be your input and output okay that's step number 2 now continuing so we have removed the season column and now if you count the total number of rows you will see that there are 8 whereas in this table there are 9 rows so you might be asking john how did we reduce a row if you look at row number 2 carefully you will see that there is a value missing here you go back to jane and you ask her where is this value gone and she says i don't know so then you have to take a decision where you say i will eliminate row number 2 and you must be asking why and the answer is simple rows with missing data now when i say missing data you see that this data is missing so rows with missing data will confuse the machine so we get rid of it so there are two parts to this problem the first part is the data that is not related that is the season column 
and the row where we have data missing, we will get rid of it. So please remember this step is some rows also have information missing. We need to remove them. Okay. So that completes step number two. Now step number three and four is you will decide to train your machine. So we have to make the machine learn using an algorithm. And I will show you that in our practical session. And you have to choose the algorithm and I will show you how to choose the algorithm. Now, if you are using the free version of the software, you will be able to choose only one algorithm there. Whereas if you have the full version of the software, you will be able to choose whichever algorithm you want. And then you have to test your machine for the accuracy that you have got. And I will show you that in the practicals as well. And step number five is we will look at the results. If you remember, there was a concept of confusion matrix. So I will show you how to read the confusion matrix. And once you look at the result, the most important step is now to check your machine's prediction. So we will feed some values in our machine and we will check the prediction or the classification done by the machine. This step will tell us whether our machine is predicting correctly or not. So this part is very important. So we will go through all the steps in the next lecture where we will go through the practicals. Between this lecture and the next, please make sure that you install the software. So one of our teaching assistants will help you install the softwares. So that should be your next lecture. Please go ahead and install your software, whether it's the free version or the full version. If you want to know how to buy the full version, you can go ahead and click on the link below. The free version is available for you to download and use as part of this course and learn. So let us quickly summarize before we close this lecture. To train a machine, we divide it into six steps. Step number one was defining the problem, which is looking at the type of flower and identifying the type of flower based on the physical parameters that is sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. Getting the right data, which is the right amount Based on that data, we remove the parameters that we don't need. We remove any missing data. That helps us clean up the data. Then we train and test the machine. We use an algorithm to train the machine. We test the machine. Then we look at the results. In this case, since we are doing a classification, we will be looking at the confusion matrix. And last and important is we check the model's prediction or your machine's prediction by entering real values, which we will look at in the next lecture. Okay, guys, I hope this lecture was clear. I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Thank you.